Hey everybody, it's Daniel Hall from Janito Studios, back for another episode of the Designer's Recourse. Today we're going to be talking uh, about setting up a nav mesh, I'm getting a little laggy on the frame rate here, uh, using the game that I'm working on right now, Limerick, uh, as an example. So we're going to set up a nav mesh right here on this balcony. And again, look, we're not going to be talking about like moving an AI around on the nav mesh or anything today, just purely how do you set one up and how can you edit and tweak it a little bit if you need to. So the first thing you'll want to do is come over here to your place actors menu on the left side. If it's not there, go to window, make sure the place actors pane is indeed displaying. Um, so by default, it looked like this and you can see I've already been searching in it. If you search NAV nav, it is going to come up with this right here and you're going to come grab one of these nav mesh bounds volumes and there you go. And it should be pretty intuitive from here, right? Let's say I just want some collision, well not collision, but uh, pathfinding up here on this balcony. I'm going to drag this out really quick. Let me bring it over here. Let me drag this out just a bit more. Let's drag it out in this direction and then we'll bring it this way a little bit. So, boom. What's easy to do is look and say, okay, well, have I succeeded? So if you'll hit the P key on your keyboard, it is the hotkey to show the nav mesh data. And you can see, hey, that looks great. Life is good. I am ready to get moving and grooving. And indeed, this would work really, really, really well. Uh, however, there are some tools that you need to know about. And what we'll do is I'm going to actually turn that off for a second. And let's start demonstrating some of the issues that could pop up. So I'm going to come down here to the, my content browser. I hit control and spacebar to bring that up. In my case, I have a chair in my project. If you didn't, then obviously this would not work. I'm going to bring that chair in. It's colossal. It's way too big. So we are going to come up here and scale this dude to 0.4. And now let's bring him up here. And now let's go ahead. And you can see even as I move things, it's re... Actually, you can't see because my camera box is in the way over here, but it's rebuilding the navigation. If I hit P, you can see it's working, right? It is determining, hey, I, I can't go to where that chair is. However, man, it is giving that chair a really wide berth. And that can be an issue because what can happen, I'm going to hit the G key to go into my game view. You can also hit P while you're in the game view to uh, see the, the nav mesh as well. But if I was standing over next to this chair and I was able to get into that little dead area, especially if you're not a phenomenal programmer like me and you're using pretty simple blueprint functions to move your AIs around, what will happen is when you get into the dead zone, the AI will kind of be like, oh, well, and he'll give up, right? He might stand there and stare at you. Sometimes he runs off to like, I don't know, make a sandwich or something, greet some friends. He just ain't got time for you anymore. And it can be annoying and it can be a problem. So this is a case where I probably want to refine this a little bit. Now, there are a few ways you could go about trying to do this. And what I've seen a lot of people talking about on the web is if you come up here to the, the world uh, search, right, or the, the searching through the assets in your level and type in nav, you have the nav mesh, nav mesh bounds volume, and then you have this recast nav mesh uh, actor here that looks like recast nav mesh, recast nav mesh, you know, a little bit repetitive. Um, and you can come down in here to the generation uh, settings here, and you can kind of start to try to tweak these numbers. But I'm going to be honest with you, uh, and, and I could demonstrate it by trying, in fact, I will really quick. Um, anytime I mess with these, it doesn't go the way I want to. For example, the cell size, you'd probably think, oh, that's the size of like the cell. So I'll bring it down to five and it'll get really accurate. No, that's not what happens at all. All right, so I'm going to put it back to, to 19. And look, hey, there's probably somebody out there that, you know, knows way better than I do. But I just find that trying to tweak this thing doesn't work very well. So instead, let me show you some of the little tricks of the trade that I use. First of all, I would come here to this chair. And in any asset like this that you bring in that is generating... Uh, you know, affecting the nav mesh, you can uh, search for navigation right in here, uh, and you can click off of can ever affect can ever affect navigation, right? You can uncheck that, and you can see that immediately. Now the chair doesn't affect navigation, but now we have a second issue, right? Now the AI doesn't think it's there at all. So if I was standing on the opposite side of this and it was standing opposite to me, it would just stand there and try to go through the chair and not be able to, and the AI would look incredibly, incredibly stupid, which we don't want that either. So how how then do would we fix this? What I would do is, again, back over here in my place actors pane, I've searched for nav, looking for all the nav mesh tools and stuff. And there's this nav mesh modifier volume. And you can see that as soon as I bring it in, what it does is it blocks off 
an, an area. You can, let's get rid of this search over here, over here in the details panel, you can change this to be different things like null, low height, obstacle. I'm sure you can set up your own custom, uh, but we're not gonna really worry about any of that. We're gonna leave it to the default, which is that it blocks off areas of the nav mesh, right? To just kind of say, all right, look, you may not see an obstacle, but I'm telling you there's one here and you can't go here. So we're gonna kind of bring this over towards where the chair is, right? And there we go, we're getting, we're getting in pretty tight. But we're not quite there yet. So let's go ahead and squeeze this in a little bit more. And now you can see, especially if I take my chair and I kind of just line it up just so here. Uh, it's still a little bit wide this direction. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna squeeze this in just a wee bit more. And now I'm gonna grab my chair. And there we go, That is that is pretty good, right? I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Things are looking good. We're going to our game view and actually turn this on. And you can see, man, I'm lined right up with the legs there. And, and there we are. Now, I know what you might be thinking in your mind is, well, Daniel, that means I'd have to sit there, right, and like manually try to do that. And this is what I would say. You're going to get what you want to do the work to get. A lot of times the nav mesh will work really, really well and it's going to auto generate and you're not going to have to worry about it a lot. But you're going to find that there's certain objects in your game that you use, especially like in what I'm working on, where I'm working on this kind of uh, stealth environment where you have to kind of dodge around things and move in and crouch down low and stay hidden. There are just little edges that you can get snagged on or that your AI can get snagged on that you have to think this through. And so, yes, it takes some extra effort. It takes some extra work, but you will find that it is worth it. And uh, what I would say is everybody has to do this and everybody struggles sometimes with this, right? There have been big budget. I can think of a recent big budget game. Uh, I won't name it because I don't like like pulling down on games, but um, you could jump on a table and the AI would like be like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> right? Because uh, they didn't account for that and didn't think that through, uh, which is part of the reason that in the game I'm working on, you just can't jump on tables. Boom, take care of that problem. Um, so these are things that you have to think about. I know it's extra work, but you got to do it. All right, let's go ahead and delete that chair and let's talk about one last thing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this guy and talk about another. And I've already shown you all the tools that generally I use. And look, sometimes going in here to the recast nav mesh and editing it can get you good results. But let's talk about another scenario that could come up. And again, use the tools we've already talked about to solve it. So I also, uh, in this game, have... Uh, do, 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 let me drag in the proper asset here. Uh, this would be a very dorky place to put this guy. But I have these little, like, power boxes that you can hide under. Right? You can crouch down and get under them, and you can hide from enemies. This would be, obviously, an incredibly dumb place to put said object. Uh, but we're, <laughs> we're going to put it there nonetheless. And again, if I look at my nav mesh as a whole, you would look at this and think, man, that looks really, really good. But let's say that you have a dead-end hiding corner like this. And you want the AI to get just right up on top of you, even if you're underneath it. Um, because sometimes, again, what will happen is you'll get back so far into this dead space. And again, this only, if you're a great programmer and you're kind of setting up your own AI navigation and movement, you probably don't have this issue. But if you're using blueprints to do some pretty simple movement with your AI, what will happen is that... Um, you'll get into that dead spot and the AI will say, well, I can't get to you. And it'll stop even trying to get close. And so if I want the AI to get to cl as close to me as possible, maybe drag me out from under there or at least just attack me while I'm in there, which I have an enemy in the game that functions in exactly that way, which is th the main antagonist himself, um, then I need to kind of ignore this object entirely, which obviously we would know exactly how to do Right, we'd go in here and turn off can ever affect navigation. But I just wanted to throw that out as a possible case, right, of where, hey, you might actually want for the AI to think that it can get into a space that it really can't, but you want to get as close as it can to it so then some other event can trigger, right, because it's close enough to an object. Another, I don't have an example of this, though I'm going to be setting up some things like this. Another great example of this would be uh, a sliding door or, or even a, a, a swinging door, right, that you wouldn't ever want it to affect navigation because you would want the AI to be at a path find to, for example, where you're at. And when it comes up to that door, instead of just walking towards it, have another event that fires that when the actor gets close enough, oh, he sees there's a door, he opens it up, 
life is good. So these are just some of the tools that I use uh, in setting up navigation. I'm going to cancel this auto save because it's going to slow things down. But obviously there's a whole lot more that you could do. But I want to thank you for joining me today for the Designers Recourse. Hope you'll be back weekly content. Uh, going to be taking a break next week. Going to be out of town. Uh, but see you again next time.